you have a huge PowerPoint presentation to make. Don't doom it with weak editing. Fine tune your ideas before you get lost in choosing colors and backgrounds. In this video, I will show you the most effective steps to build a powerful presentation by using professional editing and storytelling techniques. This is the second of a six part PowerPoint masterclass. No matter if you're an advanced presenter or a beginner, this might be the most transformational video that you see on improving your presentations. After 20 years of PowerPoint, both giving and watching, I know what works and you can too. Let my expertise become your expertise in 15 minutes. We'll be leveraging the PowerPoint outline mode. If you're familiar with that, then you're good to go. But if you need a refresher on the mechanics of outlines, then watch this video up here and come back. Now, let's power up to editing PowerPoint for success, content and flow. Our previous power up training sessions looked at how to build outlines in PowerPoint. It's obvious that I believe outlines are the key to success. They force you to focus on what's most important, which are your ideas that will get translated into words, which will be the foundation of your presentation. By working with outlines, you're no longer being caught up in the mechanics of using PowerPoint, but instead you're able to think creatively about your presentation's end goal. Outlines, free you from the linear creation process to a free form approach to spark your imagination and fully realize your goals. And having goals is critical. Otherwise, you're wasting everyone's time, including your own. To get started, you must write down what you want to accomplish. What are your end results? What actions are you trying to convince your audience to take? If you don't have a clear end goal, then you will fail. And once you've written down your goal, you need to figure out the path you'll take to convince the audience of your desired action. There are several techniques, including, but not limited to, one, walking them through the process in a logical fashion, or two, you might want to create a storyline that can be more engaging, but be aware of growing into a long, boring story. Brevity is the key to PowerPoint success. Once you've established a strategy, you can begin to hang the details onto the outline. Your talking points eventually turn into PowerPoint slides, but don't worry about PowerPoint at the moment. You really just want to jot down your ideas as quickly as possible and organize them after you finish with your brainstorming session. When you're done, give it a break and come back later to give it a fresh review. Once you're satisfied with the collection of ideas, you need to shape them into a strong storyline. During your edit phase, you'll need to refocus on your end goals. What are you trying to achieve? And then you need to create a matching story arc. You're creating a strong story with one, a beginning, two, a middle, and three, an end. More specifically, your beginning sets the expectation and goals so that the audience knows why they need to listen to you. The middle is where you make your case to reach your conclusion. And the end, the most important part, is where you close the cell. You have to state what you want the audience to do. Ask the questions to get the needed decisions, because if you do not ask to adopt your goal or move them to a specific action, then you have wasted your opportunity. I know, you're thinking, I'm just providing a committee update. I have no need to close the cell. No, you're wrong. You're asking the group to approve all the action you are reporting on. Every presentation must have a point. You must drive it home at the end or there's no reason to proceed. Okay, let's get into the mechanics of editing your ideas by flushing out your brainstorming notes that have been put into a story arc. Your outline bullet points are talking points. You're not writing a novel. PowerPoint presentations are interactive presentations of ideas 
by way of visuals and talking. You're not reading bullet points. Use bullet points to help you elaborate and illustrate your talking points and as signposts so as not to get lost during the live presentation. If everything is listed in your bullet points, then you've become irrelevant and you might as well just send an email. A powerful presentation keeps the audience engaged as they need to watch and listen. You can lead them down a decision path one step at a time. Now that we recognize that our ideas will be partially presented while giving the presentation and partially in bullet points, you need to start tracking your speaking parts, either on a separate piece of paper or if you're working inside a PowerPoint in the notes section. Here's a nitty gritty of wordsmithing the outline. Word choice. Make sure you're utilizing action words and better yet, add in visual imagery to make the whole presentation come alive. Look at this example. Here's the first boring version. The last quarter sales numbers were 10% higher. How about this instead? Previous quarter sales rocketed up a strong 10%. Notice how we changed from passive voice to active with the qualifier, the word strong. Next, what is a powerful bullet point? You need to think of them as headlines, not just some dull sentence. And what is a good headline? Something that entices people to click on the link to read the complete story. It should be short and intriguing. If you saw the following two bullet points, which one would you want to know more about? Project status update report or team exceeds 10 goals and misses one. And yes, that sounds like clickbait, but that's the point. Now, the mechanics of bullet points. Since bullet points are not necessarily full sentences, punctuations become tricky. Bullet points can take multiple forms. Let's start with a bullet list. Don't do this. Look at what we did. We took a simple list and created a consolidating main bullet point and then created sub bullet points. Fewer words and the key concepts stand out more effectively. This is another case of less is more in PowerPoint. Note the use of the colon and no period or commas in the list, nor the word and on the next to the last line. Plus, look at the capitalization of the first line. It is capitalized like a newspaper headline, but only the first letter on the sub bullet points. Next battle, numbered lists versus bullet icons. This is easier than you might think. If the list must follow a specific order, like a sequence of events, then use numbers. Otherwise, stick to bullet icons. See this example? To build a sandwich has a very specific order to the steps, but the item needed is just a list requiring only bullet points. Now, let's look at parallel construct. What that means is that you should keep every bullet item in the same format with nouns or verbs. Here's a couple examples. There's no symmetry in the first example. The first line is a noun and the next starts with a verb. The good example is all noun based. A variation is to start off with all verbs and there's advantages to using that all verbs as they represent actions, which can be more exciting and forceful in presentations. You can mix strategies in different slides, but just don't mix them on the same slide. Next is symmetrical bullet point construct choices. Look at this example. By themselves, neither bullet is wrong, but when combined together, you see the first one has an introductory statement, a colon, and then some additional info. The second one is just a statement. On each slide, keep the style the same, one way or the other. With that said, 
I will take a single complex bullet item and split it into two parts with a sub bullet point, which may break the symmetry, but helps drive home the point of a complex issue. Ideally, per slide, keep the bullet points to six or fewer. Or if you have too many, break them into multiple slides. I have been known to have dozens of items on a single slide, maybe in two columns, but this is typically for a long list of items, which I won't read. But it does let the audience glance at the long list to make a point of how many items there are. An example, a long list of actions needed to complete a project. The point is not the individual steps, but that we have lots of things still to do. As you can see, the rule of six or fewer bullet points can be broken. In fact, all the rules can be broken. Just know why you're deviating from the standards. Often, it's to drive home a point. Check, check, and check again. This phase is critical. A fabulously constructed presentation that is superbly crafted and elegantly designed can be destroyed by a single mistake, a wrong fact, a misspelled word, bad grammar can sink your credibility. I've had several presentations stopped in my tracks when someone raises their hand and points out that I have a spelling mistake on line three. That's a killer, especially if it's your boss's boss, which I still have nightmares about. What do you say? Oops is lame. And now everyone in the room doubts everything I present. And that can spill over to future presentations for critical people with long memories. So double check the facts, the spelling, the grammar, the tone, the story arc, and your goals. You can't be too careful. Check it again. Now, get brutal. Cut away all the unnecessary bullet points and slides. Always, 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 always remember that a presentation that grows too long loses people with each minute. Shorter is always better. Don't believe that you need to say everything there is about the topic. Say only what's enough to reach your conclusion. Then polish up the presentation, make the text shiny. All of this is before we add any of the fancy pictures and colors. You wanna read aloud to yourself. Visualize presenting in the room. What does your PowerPoint slide say? And what will you say to add drama to your presentation? Finally, do a trial run with a friendly audience. Hint, at the end of your practice run, ask your friendly audience if they can identify the action you want to be taken, and if they agree with your plan. If they get that right, then you got it right. You have now completed the most important part of creating a winning PowerPoint presentation. Next, you go on to the graphic design portion, which we'll cover in the next video. And now you're ready for the next module in this master series class, which we call Build Specific Slides for Targeted Results. Until then, power up.